Welcome to the T Row Show. It's your host, Keith. <clears throat> we got this is uh, the T Row Show, the Narrow Way series, part three. And the last time that we left off was um, when he had uh, poured the Holy Spirit into me. And then the next day, or that was after that, then I was going to go to the next day. Now, on the third day, he, he showed up again, 8 o'clock in the morning. And he said that you are my people. And each time you do this, this is what you have to do. You have to accept and acknowledge that. You can't just have him say it, and then you look at him dumbfounded, okay? Or just like a do look. You have to accept and acknowledge that. This is an interaction thing. This is not a uh, you sit on the sidelines and do nothing while he does everything. These are contracts, and they all have to be consensual. Okay? So um, what, what happens is, is he says, you are my people. That's when you get on your knees and say, I hereby accept and acknowledge that being of, uh, of your people. Uh, Jesus. He answers to three, all three. It was this, this was a two week argument I had as to I did not want to sub, submit to the wrong name. And everybody's got this thing that they do where they go around and they show how um, they, they get some research that's bent and say, oh, well, Yahweh is in his name. Uh, Jesus came from Zeus, um, uh, Yeshua, Yahushua. Um, all these names, you know, and uh, I, uh, I'm, I'm digressing. I'm going back just for a second to, to deal with that issue. Before all this happened, before I accepted him, and this is as Lord and Savior, um, I, uh, I had this two week deal. You know, it was about two weeks, and then all of a sudden he came to me and he says, "I answer to all three. I said, "Okay," so I, I went ahead and said it. And uh, I think I said all three, <laughs> all three names. Um, and that was it. So if you're, you know, if you're concerned about me saying the word Jesus, uh, the name Jesus or Yeshua or Yahushua, that was addressed before I, I even started this, started this road. So that being said, we can move on from there. Um, and, uh, we don't hear people coming in trying to make their point. Oh, well, he, he, he submitted unto Jesus. So therefore it's Zeus and it's a fake God. And this is all a scam and blah, blah, blah. Cause I know how you guys think you, 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 you voice of reason guys. Okay. Where, uh, you reject the father in every way you possibly can. Um, and, uh, I, I know what you do. So this is why, folks, I cover some of these things because and go back and say these things. And uh, you have to do that when you're speaking to the public because you've got all kinds of demons. And I'm talking about men. When I say demons, I'm talking about men. They are, uh, uh, <clears throat> they've done some pretty heinous things. Men have. And I mean horrible things. So... To sit there and say that uh, men aren't just as bad, if not worse, than demons is not far fetched. It's not a. It's not a. I mean, you're talking about babies here. That they're some of the things that men do. Uh, I remember one video where two doctors were, you know, uh, boxing two babies that they were they had just aborted. So you know, pretty sick, pretty sick stuff. Anyway, so. You have to get on your knees and accept and acknowledge these things. These are contracts. The next day, it's the fourth day, he came in and said, you are my family. You are now a part of my royal family. And I had to accept and acknowledge that. You got to get on your knees and accept and acknowledge. Now, the weird part, this went to 12 different, 12 days. Now, there's some of the days I don't remember. I don't remember what happened. I do remember being out in a field in the woods. There was a field in the middle of the woods. 
And I remember sitting there talking to our father in heaven and Jesus was sitting next to him on his throne. And they started explaining, or he started explaining the history, what happened, who they are, uh, what's going on, introducing, you know, the whole thing. Uh, because apparently the 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 story in the Bible is fairly close, but you know, you you kind of have to hear it from their point of view. Um uh, the father and the son. Now that brings up another issue because there'll be because there's a lot of people saying that um that Jesus was God. And then there's a, of course another argument. Men are going to argue back and forth rather than going to the source and asking them. And my experience has been that there's two separate but they're together. There is a father and there is a son. And they are together. Now, what I mean by together, I'm going to explain that here uh, uh, fairly soon. Okay, now after uh, uh, these um, uh, these explanations, when I was in the field and stuff like that, all of a sudden out of nowhere, and this was after the uh, the curse was removed. Keep in mind, you do not go to hell with the curse in you. That has to be removed. And I heard the father say, you are condemned. He's refused me. You, he, he says, I'm, I'm refusing this, this, uh, this man. And uh, rebuked me. But you have to understand, he has to do that. Because I'm not perfect. If you've stolen once, like I talked about in the last video, it's, a, it's a, a, a mistake, but I didn't fix the mistake, so therefore became a thief. Just in that one instance, that made me a thief. Okay? So you have to understand under perfection, that's what happens. If you do it once, you've done it. It's over. That's what you've become. So what a lot of people do is they do these things and then say, okay, well, Jesus forgave, forgives me. Like he's some kind of pushover. And that's not what happens. Jesus is a very hard man. The reason why I know that is because he showed me just a little bit of what he was going through. And he let me feel just a little bit of what he was going through during that time of his crucifixion, during that day and the time he was on the cross, uh, the time that uh, the father was yelling at him and taking his anger out on him, all that. Horrible. He also let me feel his isolation, how he was isolated when he was there. Everyone had refused him. Everyone was rebuking him, and even the father himself was yelling. So imagine what that's like. Just a few seconds of that. When the whole world is against you, the universe is against you. That's a that's a hard day. It's a bad day that you're going through. And I that by understanding that, going through that, I understand what he meant by. Father, why have you forsaken me? I get that completely. I know what he meant and what his intentions were. Because the father had been yelling and taking his anger out on him for three hours. The last three hours he was living. On that cross. So that's why he was more, it was more mental and it was more spiritual than you could ever imagine. And at that time, the father's anger was was had subsided. Father, why have you forsaken me? His anger has subsided. It was done and it was accomplished. What he needed to do. Okay? He only provided the way for you. The rest is your choice. You have to choose it. 
It's not guaranteed. And it's not just a five minute thing. The narrow way could take five years, depending on how, how long it takes you. Once entering into the straight gate in the narrow way. Once you take responsibility for your own actions and start facing who and what you are. Okay. So once that happened, you have to understand that when you get rebuked or you get denied by our father in heaven, that goes straight to the core of your heart. But you understand your mind has to overcome your emotions. Your mind has to overcome all that you are feeling, everything, in order to understand and go through because you don't want to witness against him. What you want to do, and this is when somebody's going to tell you what you want to do <laughs> in this case, is accept it. Agree with him quickly. You need to agree. Because why? Because he's right. The people in hell right now all know he's right. They all know they deserve to be in hell for what they've done. They all know that. How do I know that? It's come there, there's a well, number one, I was there. And number two, there was another man that came back and said the same thing. He said, by the time that you're there or when you're there, Everybody knows why they're there, and they know that he is a just God. They know they're there from because of him, because he's right. Everyone here deserves condemnation. You all deserve it. I deserved it. Okay? Do you have to understand that? And if you can't do that, you'll never make it. If you keep fighting him and fighting his justice and fighting his perfection... And fighting who he is, you'll never make it. You have to stop fighting. That's what we keep trying to tell people. Stop fighting. Get out of Babylon and stop fighting. Find out what the truth is and agree with it uh, quickly. Understand his perfection and agree with it quickly. Once you do that, his best interest is to get you saved, give you salvation. And how he does that, it is never explained to you anywhere in churches, on earth, anywhere, how that happens. And this is what I'm going to try to impart that understanding to others to help them out and I'm doing it out of the kindness of my heart. I don't have to do it. Don't have to do anything that I'm doing. So please remember that. <clears throat> Meaning, um, don't start yelling at me. <laughs> if you got a problem, you go to them. You go to the Holy Spirit, set apart spirit. You go to Jesus. Go find them if you got an argument. And reconcile with them. Make peace. Okay? So, that's the uh, what you have to deal with is a love issue. So, when he removes the curse, and it's funny, I had another guy who was, was going to come on here. And I was going to use him as a second witness. Uh, his testimony as a second witness to others, and I'll have to get him on later, um, where the operation to remove that curse from you, you could literally smell alcohol. He smelled it too. I literally felt the man's hand, whoever was doing it, it wasn't Jesus, uh, felt the man's hand, push, my, push me back down on the bed. That's right. That, that was one of the uh, things that I forgot. I think it was on the fifth or the sixth day. You could smell his uh, everything. And he says, hold on. He says, what you're going to feel is you're going to feel like a laser is going through your stomach. And he says, you only feel that for about two minutes. He says, it's going to sting. And you're going to feel this. I said, okay, I'm ready. 
And he literally cut that thing out of me, that curse, that soul and that spirit that was fused together. Now, after that point, you're only alive because of the what? The set apart spirit, the same set apart spirit that raised uh, Jesus from the dead. So you walk around without a soul and without a spirit. How, how weird is that, Jen? <laughs> Take some adjusting. <laughs> it's very weird, right? It's incredibly weird. Because you know your soul and your spirit is gone. And the simple fact that the Holy Spirit is with, or the set apart spirit is within you. I, can't, I keep saying the Holy Spirit. That's just an old church uh, uh, training is what that comes from. So I'm I'm sorry if I if I'm uh, messing with people because I keep saying that. So just bear with me. Um, the set apart spirit is within every atom of your body. Is I mean is everything that you're made up of. So it keeps you alive. And then people go, well, that sounds like vampires. Well, in a way it is because they don't have a soul or spirit. It's all gone. Now, at this point in your life, um, you get extremely harsh, <laughs> if you know what I mean. You're like, you know, you, you, you've got uh, truth coming to you. Okay. So what happens after that is you end up in hell after he condemns you that was like think the seventh or eighth day so i'm i'm laying there in bed again and i feel two hands coming up and grabbing me around the, the stomach and pulling me down and i'm not afraid at this time trust me i'm not afraid of this you should not be afraid of this this is a this is actually a very good experience to a certain extent what you see is not good, but you have a lot of faith in Jesus um, uh, when, when this is all happening. So I'm going down a very long or deep hole. All I see is black rock on each side, you know, all around me. And I actually started saying, we <laughs> like that because I like to fly. I don't know if anybody else likes to fly, like even in airplanes and stuff. So I've always liked to do that. <clears throat> And I ended up down at the bottom. I hit the ground and I I get up and I'm on my hands and knees and I'm looking over this cliff and the cliff could be more than, I'd say, 30 feet down. And there's a, a rock protruding out of a little cave. It's like a, it's coming, it's coming out of the other side. Okay. Other side of the cliff. There's another side there. It's like a hole. And there's a rock that protrudes out and underneath it, all I see is fire. And then the devil shows up and then all of a sudden Jesus shows up. Now Jesus blocks what I'm, uh, what the argument that they're having, I can hear the uh, muted arguments, the argument going on. All I hear is raw, 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 and you can hear the tones changing. But you can't really understand what he's saying. And it's like a a, um, a veil went up and it looks like when you're trying to um, cut something out in television, you don't want the viewers to see. It's blurry. That's what this was like. And I'm sitting there and I'm looking down and I'm hearing this woman screaming the top of her lungs. And you're thinking... What what is that? You know what what's going on? Well, when the second you think that you're there, you're you're looking, and she's on fire, and she was a former prostitute, and right next to her there was a drug dealer and a pimp, and they were on fire, but they were refusing to cry or scream as a rebellion thing. You know, I'm I'm you know just being stubborn here. I'm not going to show you that you're getting to me, type crap. And she was screaming bloody murder. And this roar, roar, roar was going on. Now, 
there was a rock right there next to me on my right. Um, and this screen was in front of that rock. Well, the screen leaves. And Jesus looks at me. I'm looking at him. And he he looks at the devil and he just says a few Hebrew words. I can't remember what a paleo Hebrew words. I didn't remember what it was. And all of a sudden, the devil was just encompassed in this cocoon looking uh, uh, white energy. And he had him spinning, spinning around. He was just spinning around really slow. And he says, who, uh, he goes, look at this thing's heart. So I looked into his heart. And he said, uh, and when I, when I saw inside the devil's heart, I saw nothing but purified hate. That's all it was. Purified hate. Like he had encompassed himself into hate and hate alone to survive. Because he thinks that no, they're never going to get rid of hate. So if he becomes it, then he'll survive. This is his reasoning to himself. And some of the most hideous things that you could ever imagine is in that thing, that thing's heart. The reason why I call him that thing is because uh, uh, Jesus looks at him and says, who in their right mind would worship this thing? And then he was gone. And everything went dark. And I was sitting in the abyss, just sitting there. Everything was dark. Um, demons couldn't touch me or get near me, but I was there. And no light whatsoever. I'm telling you, pitch dark. You can't see your hand in front of your face. Even if you put your fingers like an inch from your eyes, you can't see anything. So I sat there and I just said, okay, I'm going to wait. I don't know what this is, but I'm going to wait. And so I sat there and four hours later, uh, I had fallen asleep during this time. I just fell asleep. And four hours later, I woke up to a door opening and it was Jesus coming through that door. Apparently everything that had just transpired, he brought before the father. And he litigated it. Okay. That's very important to understand. He said he will go to the father on your behalf and he will represent you before him. That is a, that, that move, that process is incredible. He's a, an incredible litigator. And you know, when it's been approved. So all throughout the narrow way, a lot of people are sitting there waiting, going, well, I, I, nothing's happening. Well, probably because your case is being brought before our Father in Heaven. And what, what he's doing with you. Everything is recorded in their court. Everything on the narrow way is recorded in their court. The Father has to approve each step as, 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 it's, as, or as it's going on. So he comes back, and this is one thing that kind of hits your heart heavily. Even though I didn't have one, it, 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 it's there's there's a brain part of this or a mind, but I'll get into that later because everything is stripped from you. And he looks at me and he says, "Are you ready to ready to love?" I said, "Yes." I put my hand up, and he picked me up. He pulled me forward. And after that, I went into a light and I was back in the uh, where uh, I was, which was uh, in the bedroom. Instantly. Well, I went to sleep. It was, it was a, a rough thing. So I rested about an hour and then got up. And I think I got a hold of some people in the temple and started telling them what happened. So you guys are not going to believe this. This is amazing. Okay. Um. So that is like, I, I could say probably step five through 12, and then that was it. All right, now I'm, I'm walking around empty. My heart's empty. Everything's empty. And we have a love issue. I hadn't accepted agape love yet. 
You have filial love and you have agape love. And filial love is the love that man has now, which is no love at all. Okay? And agape love is a different love. That's the love of our Father in heaven and Jesus. And that's the kind of love he was trying to talk about, he was trying to introduce. And I've got some Bible... Uh, um, uh, scriptures in here to sh show you what I'm talking about and what I mean by I've spoken to him separately. So all of a sudden, it was about a month and a half later, I'm still uh, empty, still walking around, empty, nothing in me. Um, You feel like you're, you know, walking around dead. <laughs> you can't really feel much as far as... um. Uh, as far as emotions are concerned, it's just pretty, pretty st steady. And, and one morning I get up and I'm, I'm, uh, you know, doing my thing. And I hear uh, Jesus calling my name from about 20 different directions. Keith, 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 Keith you know, and I'm looking around the room. I keep following it and I'm looking around the room and all of a sudden he jumps into me. The greatest day of my life is awesome. He jumps into me and he jumps in and he claims his throne. The internal heart of hearts, like I showed you on T Tabernacle, beyond the uh, the veil that's placed there. And he jumps in. And I said, why did you do this with all of the the name, you know, calling my name from different directions. He says, I did not want you to think that I was a demon, that I was trying to jump into you. And you rebuke me. I said, okay, I'm good with that. Thank you. And he's been inside of me ever since. Now, keep in mind, he's sitting on your internal heart of heart, your throne of thrones. You can see him anytime you want when that happens. And on the other side of him, within that, uh, you can see heaven. So it's a quite a different world. It's a very unique world that you begin to live in. Okay? Now, I wanted to sh uh, talk to you about this just a little bit, because you're going to say, there's just no way. This is total crap, right? How's it feel within having him within you, Jen? Oh, it's pretty, it's hard to explain or hard to describe because it's, I don't know how I was living before without him. You're, um, you're complete with him. Well, well you're alive finally. <laughs> That's true. Okay. Now, um, and I was going to have, uh, uh, Brandon on here, he can be another witness to it. He this happened to him too. Uh, basically, uh, almost the same way. Some are different. Okay, a little different than the way it happens, but it does. So John fifteen five, I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. Think about that. I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. So we know there's two separate ones there. Jesus isn't God. Isn't our Father? They're two separate. And if you don't know that, it's going to be very difficult for you to go down the narrow way because you're going to think Jesus is God. And when he goes and litigates on your behalf, who's he going to? You see, so you're going to be really confused. <laughs> you're going to say, none of this stuff makes any sense. All right. Every branch in me that bears no fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes so that it bears more fruit. You are already clean because of what the word of which I have spoken to you. Stay in me, and I stay in you. You have to understand the oneness, folks. You have to understand that. A part of you is in him, and he is in, in, in a part of you. Okay? Now, as the branch is unable to bear fruit of itself, unless it stays in the vine... So neither you, unless you stay in me. I am the vine; you are the branches. You're an ext I'm 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 paraphrasing here with me. You're an extension of him. 
You're kind of like a mini me, an extension of Jesus. And that's how you're going that's how he gave you salvation. Because you're going to be uh, a, a an extension of him which means that the father only sees him in you. The, the rest of you is going to die and he's going to replace you within, within you. That's how you're getting salvation. It was the only way to, to get it done because otherwise you were condemned. Because without me, you are able to do not. <laughs> If he's not in you, you can't do a thing. You're worthless and useless. Okay? So these preachers going around and saying, oh, well, he just accepts you for who you are. Deep down, you're a good person. Everybody's a good person. You heard Olstein, right? Everyone's a good person. He never talks about the sin issue. And when he doesn't talk about the sin issue and, and the fact that you are in fact condemned and don't solve that issue and resolve it with our Father in heaven, then guess where you're going? And you can, you can when you get down there, you can thank Osteen, the idiot that just wanted your money. Why that guy has so many followers, I have no idea, other than people just want to hear good stuff. They don't want to hear about who and what they are. So they refuse the narrow way. And when they refuse the narrow way, our Father in Heaven puts a um, uh, puts a veil on over their head. They, they, they live in a delusion when you refuse them. Don't refuse the Son. He really loves the Son. And you need to listen to his son, because as far as I personally am concerned, he is overly qualified for the job that he has been given. And that's the job to take care of you. That is the most incredible man I have ever met. Am I right with that, Jen? You know that, too. Oh, yes, he, he is. <laughs> He's, he's, I mean, every every characteristic of him, every attribute is is perfect. He's funny, um, he's strong, he's smart, like everything. Very Amazing wise. Man. Yeah, he can see through everybody's BS. <laughs> That's the funny part on how he sees things. He can see right through your crap, I mean, in a second. But he's not condescending about it either. No, Which he's funny about it. He's very, very down to earth when it comes to that. And he has a very um, humble way of correcting you. <laughs> um, he even jokes with you sometimes with um, with his correction. It's, it's nice. <laughs> it's really, it is. It's incredible. He says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who stays in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. Because without me, you are able to do not. If anyone does not stay in me, he is thrown away as the branch and dries up. And they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you stay in me and my words stay in you, you shall ask whatever you wish, and it shall be done for you. Why? Because you're an extension of him. Our Father in heaven is doing it for Jesus, his son. In turn, has been is done for you. It's not being done for you directly. It's being done for him and then it extends to you. He's perfect in his obedience to the Father. That's why the Father, you know, blesses him beyond imagination. So you have to realize that. You have to understand the relationship. And that's difficult for people to understand. Because why? Because no preacher is telling you these things. They're just saying, you've been saved, have a good day. Just don't do bad things. If you do, come back and say, forgive me. <laughs> Give them 20 bucks. All right. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. If you stay in me 
and my words stay in you, you shall ask whatever you wish, and it shall be done for you. In this my Father is esteemed, that you he you bear much fruit, and you shall be my taught ones. As for the Father has loved me, I have also loved you. Stay in my love. If you guard my commands, you shall stay in my love, even as I have guarded my Father's commands and stay in his love. You get the idea now? You are covered by the Lamb, the blood of the Lamb. You're covered by him. That's what that means. I went further and further and further down the line, and this was years later. So like two, three years later, I kept going, and our Father in heaven I finally found. You can find him too. And it's done through the Lamb. And he says, uh, uh, this is jumping way ahead here, but he said, you were sealed to me by the blood of the Lamb. He says, you're not going anywhere. First thing he told me. You found me, you're not going anywhere. You were sealed to me by the blood of the Lamb. It's been a huge trip since then, I'll tell you that. All right. Now, and for them, I set myself apart, so that they too might be set apart in truth. In other words, you're not living everybody else's uh, fantasies here. And I do pray for these alone but also for uh, uh, for those believing in me through their word, so that they all might be one as you, Father, are in me. Listen to that. So that they all might be one as you, Father, are in me, and I in you. And that's what I was talking about when I said he jumped in me. And a month or two later, he brought me into him. And we were one. And I'm an extension of him. Just like anybody else. Everyone is able to do this. Everyone. Okay? So that they too might be one in us. Listen to that. It's very difficult to understand this uh, if you haven't gone through it. But I'm trying to give you a, 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 a beacon of light to go towards. Um. So that they all might be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, so that they too might be one in us, so that the world might believe that you have sent me. And the esteem which you gave me, I have given to them, so that they might be one and we, as we are one. See, that's where Jesus is trying to share the inheritance. The inheritance is Jesus, and Jesus is the inheritance. Okay, now in uh, I in them and you in me, that's I've gone through that so that they might be perfected into one. So that the world knows that you have sent me and he have loved or have loved them as you have loved me. So it all joins together and this is what they call the oneness. Okay, but it has to be real. He literally has to jump into you. This isn't something that you just uh, say and it's it's done, okay? Now, after he jumps into you, guess what happens? You're bestowed agape love. And your love issue is now settled. You love as he loves. And you are one with them in the, in the oneness. But I'm telling you, keep going. Because there's a lot to deal with. Okay. I'm going to uh, read the rest of this. Um, and uh, Yahweh said to, to him, I, I think that's Yahushua. Have I been with you so long and you have not known me? Uh, Philip, he's talking to Philip. He who has seen me and has seen the father. And how do you say, show us the father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? Still, two separate. So these preachers that are coming back calling Jesus God, um, they're not reading this. Further, 
they've never gone through that because they're um they're sons of reason in the age of reason they're devil worshipers they're taking the scriptures out of context and saying oh well that he was the father in the flesh not true the father was in him and still is today because if jesus listen now if jesus is in you and the father is in him guess what you have the father within you and in the place the uh inner heart of hearts where the father was in adam and was um uh block or uh, uh, blocked from it because of the curse and you were cut off from the father so guess what jesus is within you and the father is within him you will know when it happens because we just had someone else go through the same thing about a month ago who did not believe a word i was saying thought that uh i was crazy until it happened to her and then am i right about that jen you witnessed yep. it yep we've yeah there's there's been a few <laughs> that think hers that was we're funny, just though yeah hers was funny um <laughs> <laughs> thought you're absolutely completely bonkers until it happened to her and when it happened to her she goes, oh, my God, I understand everything you guys are saying now. It's unbelievable. I get all of it. You've been telling me for a year. I thought you guys were nuts. And I said, no kidding. He goes, yeah. I said, then why'd you hang around? <laughs> Didn't have much of an answer for that. <laughs> why are you listening to crazy people? You know? Well, I knew something was there. I just didn't. I just, could, just couldn't get it. You know, that kind of thing happened. Okay, so that's when you become part of the oneness and your life absolutely changes from the beginning of this narrow way and you end up on the narrow way and you will be on the narrow way for the rest of your life. It becomes a way of life. And that's what they call walking in the faith uh, of Jesus. There is only the oneness. There is only him within you and you within him. And what I'll do after that, what happened was, is I was able to, and I'll stop here, but I was given um, the history lesson as to exactly what happened. So our father in heaven brought me with him down uh, a couple of timelines and then showed me what happened in the garden and what happened to him and how he felt when all this came down, all this happened. He was telling me, his version and how he sees uh, sees things as far as our history is concerned. And that, my friends, is a very interesting story as to how he sees things. His side. Nobody ever heard his side before of what happened in Adam and Eve. They only saw just a little bit, but he had more to explain. He wanted to he wanted to say something okay he didn't feel like he had to he wanted to and this is on your way to making peace with him and reconciling with him it's an incredible road folks so this ends part three and we'll talk about next time um we will uh we can talk about uh some of the history and some of the things that uh, that he was telling me, as far as being as far as it happening, okay. And then after that, you end up going through what you call the narrow way, and folks, it is literally narrow. And you will expl uh, I'll explain the marriage that happens under the new covenant, okay. So. I'll put that in my notes and we'll see you next time.